Last time we met, we completed the design of a real time clock and uh, this time we are going to touch upon the test bench. We are not going to write an elaborate test bench, but only to test the basic um, running of the time as is concerned and uh, you can try other modes as well on your own. And um, to start with, we need to declare the time scale and uh, let us say we want, um, uh, we wish to uh, go for 1 gigahertz simulation. So, for which we need to go for a higher precision here. So, we will make the time base as 100 picoseconds and uh, the accuracy is 10 picosecond. This we have already discussed a number of times earlier and uh, you also have a clock period by 2 uh, declared as 5, uh, in, uh, the basic unit is 100 picosecond. So, if you put 5 here, it means 500 picosecond and this is on time and likewise um, equal number will be for the off time of the clock and uh, total what you get is uh, 2 into 5 and that is uh, 10 into uh, 100 which is uh, 1000 picosecond or 1 nanosecond. So, if you take 1 nanosecond it is nothing other than 1 gigahertz and uh, that is how you arrive at um, you fix the frequency in this fashion. And, uh, Next thing we had to do is we had to include the um, actual design which is rtc underscore alarm dot v this is the design file and we need to declare the present module which is the test bench rtc underscore alarm underscore test this is the nomenclature we have been following all through and uh, we need to uh, declare the inputs and outputs even on the test bench and uh, as you recollect we have used uh, reg for the inputs in the test bench and uh, wire for the outputs once again in the test bench, which is uh, different from what we have been using in the uh, design. So, we need uh, different inputs such as clock, reset and um, uh, run, set, switch. This is time stop, stopwatch, then uh, up, down, count mode switch and then uh, hours, minutes, seconds, push button switches as well as uh, push button switch for start and stop. And uh, we also need uh, different uh, switches such as alarm, read or set or alarm off or on, then three uh, I mean, uh, different switches for the three alarms that we have and I it stands as we have seen before is for the input. And uh, as far as the test bench is concerned, we are not concerned about uh, or alarm or alarm etcetera which we have used in the design because they are all internal signals. And as far as the outside world is concerned, it is the I which is the actual input or uh, display uh, will be the output anyway display 1 through uh, display 6 and each of which is uh, 8 bits and uh, we have seen that A, B, C, D is the order, A is the uh, bit 7 and decimal point is the very last uh, 0 bit. And we also have uh, two more uh, outputs that is beep as well as timer out. 
and this is what we have used for uh, uh, setting a particular output when uh, count matches in the uh, either in the up count mode or down count mode. And BP is the square pulse which we create uh, in order to switch on a um, piezoelectric uh, buzzer and uh, um, uh, buzzer will have a continuous sound and when you uh, uh, output a square pulse switching on and switching off you get a beeping sound and that is why we nomenclature it as beep. And note that in a test bench we need to declare all the outputs as wire. And uh, next is we will instantiate the alarm uh, RTSC alarm design module and that is this here and uh, instantiate just once this is the, like any other IC that you give uh, instantiation there. And uh, we declare ports by names and uh, clock reset and uh, I run uh, set time stopwatch all these are the input, uh, various inputs down up then hours, minutes, seconds there as well as a start stop uh, push button switches and then alarm read set, alarm off on and the three alarms that you have. And note that we have used the very uh, same name uh, even inside this. This uh, implies um, the module uh, name is uh, within the uh, design module this is the name and um, in the present um, uh, test bench these are all the names. Since both I mean uh, are same, uh, we have declared the it as a wire, which actually means these uh, symbols as such. And these are all the seven segment LED outputs for display one through display six, and uh, beep and timer out also will have to be declared. So next thing that we do uh, is uh, apply uh, stimulants and uh, in the form of uh, various inputs. And uh, when you uh, for that you need an initial block and that is the begin and there will be a corresponding end at the uh, towards the end of this uh, test bench. And uh, first what we will do is we will initialize clock to 0 then uh, reset, we will apply the reset pulse immediately. So, and uh, pro, uh, perhaps after uh, 100 uh, units of time uh, we can uh, start uh, the real work and uh, uh, some more uh, switches are also initialized here and though not necessary at this point of time and similarly the hours, minutes, seconds, start, stop all uh, have been initialized to an inactive state and uh, the active state is start, stop for example must be 0 if you mean a start has been pressed. So that is to say that we uh, it is in start mode if it is 0, right now it is in stop mode and uh, all other switches such as uh, alarm read set, alarm off on and the individual alarms are all uh, in the inactive state. And after 100 uh, units of time, unit of time here as you would notice is 100 picosecond. We have declared using the time scale earlier and 100 into 100 picoseconds will be your uh, that is 10,000 picoseconds or 10 nanosecond will be the, um, uh, the actual application uh, I mean uh, starting of the um, uh, real time clock. And uh, you would notice now that uh, reset has been taken to inactive state, this uh, active low is the um, 0 means active low. And uh, now we are uh, making it inactive so that uh, we can uh, start um, the design working. And uh, we also have a run set and uh, let us set that particular to run as well as to time. So that is what we mean by this comment run time mode. And so that we can check only the uh, running of the uh, normal timing. And uh, after a, uh, quite a long time uh, and, uh, we will uh, we would like to stop. Now let us analyze uh, why it is 10 millisecond as commented here. Say we know that it is 100 picosecond, so uh, 100 two ciphers are there and you have one more 0 here. So uh, if you knock off this uh, 0, what you will be getting is nanosecond and if you knock off another 3, you will be getting microsecond. If you knock off further 3, you will get 10 millisecond. So 10 is that is how you account for 10 millisecond here. And uh, as usual the clock will have to be toggled, we use an always block and clock period by 2. Uh, after this much time that is every 100 picoseconds uh, what we do is uh, invert the clock and uh, assign it to itself. In other words we are toggling to get a free running clock and this uh, ends the uh, test bench. So now what is to be seen is the actual user constraint file and uh, uh, put the following in a separate file uh, say rtc.ucf, uh, having named it as rtsc underscore alarm you, can, you are free to do uh, give the same name or any other name. So for brevity sake I just put rtc there and locate it in preferably though uh, not mandatory. 
So, this, there is no compulsion for you to lo locate it in the same folder and but it will be uh, uh, convenient uh, if it is located in the same folder as rtc underscore alarm dot edf which was created by using the simplify tool and that is a synthesis tool and uh, this is the um, ucf file from here onwards uh, you will have to put in this uh, rtc dot ucf file. This uh, ucf file is required in Xilinx place and route when you wish to get the bit stream. Uh, bit stream will be in a dot bit uh, uh, file by the same name rtc underscore alarm which is the design and uh, uh, net clock location is what you um, uh, use for different, uh, different varying signal. For example, for clock you declare it as a net here and then assign the pin here. So, for example, clock is assigned um, 89 pin in the um, XCV 800 device which we have used in the, on the board uh, FPGA board that we have used even for the traffic light controller. We are going to use the very same thing which you are going to see a demo shortly and uh, these are all various uh, pins for all the inputs first here run set time uh, down up then hours minute seconds start stop and, and then alarm read set alarm off on and uh, you note that the pin numbers are uh, different from each other and uh, you have uh, three alarms one through three and uh, for the output also you should have and uh, these are all the names of this inputs and outputs and uh, here you know note that you need to do bitwise because there are eight uh, bits the system cannot do it uh, all by itself you have to assign uh, every bit um, uh, unique number and uh, note that these numbers are all not in order and uh, so it all depends upon how you have connected your extension uh, port from the uh, uh, FPGA board on the FPGA board and uh, likewise we have uh, six displays totally display 2 is here then display 3 is here then display 4 then uh, followed by display 5 and then finally display 6 and uh, in addition to this we also have two single bit ports uh, so you need only one pin to be assigned whereas these are all uh, 8 bit uh, uh, output port displays each of that and uh, timer out is uh, just a single pin and that is assigned uh, 162. P is also mandatory you have to identify it as a uh, pin. So, next we will go into the actual simplify results. So, you can see the usual uh, reporting here where log syntax uh, successful then top level is the RTC alarm then synthesizing display ROM as well as the actual design and this is the performance summary that you have here and uh, slack means how much time free time is available so that you can uh, jack up your speed if you desire. For example, uh, it would be enough if you run at 20 megahertz uh, instead of 1 gigahertz. So, I have also told uh, caution you that we on simulation you can run at any gigahertz and uh, but um, uh, after place and route it will come down drastically. For example, it has come down to uh, 42 megahertz uh, this is the highest frequency that you can run. So, it will be a misconception uh, and you will be misguided if you just simulate at 1 gigahertz and jump to the conclusion that um, you have achieved 1 gigahertz that is totally a wrong picture only after Xilinx place and route you will know the true picture and uh, even synthesis uh, or simplify also will not reveal the exact uh, uh, frequency of operation you have to go for the Xilinx place and route which you are going to see next. So, here in, in simplify we had uh, requested only for a 20 megahertz uh, oscillate, um, uh, operation frequency and uh, it has reported 42 megahertz. So, this corresponds to 50 um, uh, nanosecond 20 megahertz would correspond to 50 nanosecond 1000 by 20 this is the uh, shortcut for you to uh, compute how much nanoseconds as we have seen before and uh, uh, this will um, uh, 42 if you take uh, it will uh, I mean uh, corresponding to this how much uh, is the estimated period is here and uh, if you add this to what you get is this because 20 megahertz is the actual uh, thing that we want. So, the device that we have used is XCV 800 HQ 240-4 and I think this is the highest speed in this particular uh, uh, package and uh, what it reports here is the uh, primitives that have been used in the FPGA this is a MUX 
then uh, and uh, exclusive or once again mugs then flip flops and so on. How many of them are have been used or uh, listed here uh, followed by input buffers and output buffers that have been used in the design. And uh, finally, you have um, a report of how many LUTs have been uh, taken by the design. It is just a 3 percent of the total device because we are dealing with uh, nearly 900,000 gate and uh, this one has taken away only 681 LUTs. Just remember uh, 681, we will cross check this figure uh, and it was 42 megahertz earlier and uh, let us cross check with the Xilinx uh, and it says mapper successful. With the Xilinx um, results, uh, let us comp make a comparison. Uh, we have already seen the navigator for Xilinx using that 6.1i version, both the 6.1 and 6.2 as I mentioned earlier is um, uh, basically the same, not much of a difference. And uh, design it reports is the RTC alarm and uh, the input for the Xilinx present route is the RTC alarm dot uh, EDF file which was created by the simplify tool and that is the synthesis tool. And uh, it reports uh, you do not have to specifically mention all this because this um, EDF file itself will communicate to place and route tool uh, what device have been, uh, has been chosen and, uh, and so on. And you can see precisely uh, the same report here and uh, once again the target reported here and it rep also report there are no uh, neither uh, errors nor any I mean some warnings are there I am sorry some no errors anyway. The warnings you will have to look into very carefully and um, what is the logic uh, utilization there was nothing wrong with the uh, warnings it was only uh, reporting that uh, some bits are um, at 0 therefore it has optimized and so on. So next is I mean uh, 4 input LUTs 641 only have been used um, this is the report of Xilinx place and route whereas it was 681 reported by this uh, synthesis tool. So synthesis tool is only a rough um, idea it gives whereas this place and route um, tool will give you the exact one because this is the actual FPGA vendors uh, uh, final uh, tool uh, run on that. And uh, it also has um, uh, slices reported and how much is it is it is reported there and uh, I think for it was a different uh, here, 4 input LUTs, why is it reporting, uh, okay it is same but there is some discrepancy it appears here, uh, 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 I am not clear about it and uh, you will have to find out why it is, okay anyway it is very close but this figure is uh, the total number on the device. And uh, finally, it also reports uh, total equivalent gate count for the design which is nothing but 6721 gates and in addition to this you need for uh, JTAG IO uh, gate count for IOBs. So if you want JTAG communication for uh, download, downloading bitstream and uh, through your parallel port of the computer, so you also need uh, this many uh, gates additional gates and uh, in total it is uh, hardly uh, under uh, 10,000 gates that you can have. And, uh, and finally, it reports on the uh, maximum frequency of operation. Earlier it was some 41.2 or 42 point something reported by the uh, simplified tool, but what is uh, reported by Xilinx is the uh, nearly 40 megahertz, so very uh, uh, close to that. And uh, it also reports that uh, DRC has been checked and uh, it is saving the bitstream RTC underscore alarm dot bit. So we have an assignment but before we come to the assignment uh, let us have a demo of this and prior to that let us uh, have a look at the uh, waveforms for this design. So let us say uh, to start with we have been running the um, uh, uh, frequency operation is uh, uh, 1 gigahertz, 1 gigahertz would mean 1 nanosecond. So let us see the, the clock uh, I mean uh, first one is showing the clock I will zoom it up a uh, little later. Uh, first let me explain, you can see the clock pulse there and uh, if you take this one for example if it is 10 here and the next clock appears uh, here, this is a um, falling edge, so it is 1. So if you take rising edge also it will be same, you can see from uh, here, so rise, uh, it starts from here, this is also falling edge, it, it makes no difference anyway. And you see that at uh, 10 nanosecond we had taken as 
uh, 100 um, units of time after that only we start the real operation and then uh, uh, reset was which was active here and this uh, made uh, inactive so that the normal operation starts and simultaneously what we do is we set it to run mode as well as time mode this is run and uh, time so it is set to 1 here and uh, we should also set alarm uh, read set uh, to read position you should not uh, put it in set mode if you do this one they, uh, you will not get the display and uh, it will freeze at 0 so you can notice that by changing your test bench so this will have to be remember that that all these three will have to be one that is uh, run mode time mode then alarm in read mode and uh, this is um, uh, mandatory in order that um, time may run uh, smoothly and this happens at 10 nanoseconds 10 nanoseconds because we have taken uh, 100 picosecond as a time base multiplied by 100 uh, which we have given after 100 nanosecond uh, 100 uh, units of time so that gives you 10 nanosecond so this waveform is for that and uh, zoom version if you want you can just um, you can just see here so that is the clock the right clock reset run set time stopwatch alarm here you can see that all of them are one and uh, uh, at the time of it is working so the cursor is some uh, somewhere here so after it has started working so that is the point there so you can see here so every um, um, one clock is this so if you go to the time base at the bottom you will see that it is 6 to 7 nanosecond so it, this is 1 nanosecond in other words uh, it is running at 1 gigahertz although it is running at gigahertz what has been reported by Xilinx place and route is 39 megahertz so uh, it should not exceed this time and another point here is and uh, we have a display here and uh, this displays are uh, basically from the counter 1 through uh, counter 6 they are all zeros uh, to start with so naturally you should have uh, it reflected in the display you remember that displays are uh, all of them you can see the same thing pattern right up to the 6 here and uh, if you analyze this one these are all nothing but A, B, C, D then E, F up to that all are 1 so that means uh, these segments are on in other words it is nothing but 0 so th this one is a G segment which is the center segment of the 7 segment LED display and uh, this is off so naturally they, it will automatically display 0 which is in uh, agreement with the counter 1. Uh, through counter 6 all have been the same thing so when you get to the fag end of this waveform we will see uh, uh, differences uh, reflecting counter 1 on display 1 counter 2 on display 2 and so on and uh, so we will go for the next uh, waveform here so here what you get is the total um, entire um, cycle completed so the real time class has run right from 0 through 1 up to 2 this one is right up to 3 23 so we have 23 59 uh, 59 uh, 23 hours 59 minutes 59 seconds uh, starting right from 0 here so these are all too high we cannot notice this here but you can uh, notice this 2 3 here and once again if you see this uh, a b c d display i mean we'll um, uh, with the next waveform we'll see analyze uh, to see whether it is tallying with the counter one and so on this is precisely what you are going to get in the next uh, uh, display output and I uh, will zoom this before I close this. So you can see that clock reset etc run set etc and you can see clearly 0 through and uh, display 1 through 6 here and uh, counter going for right from 0 through 9 for uh, this is counter 1 this is counter 2 so it goes right up to 9 and once again it goes up to 0 through 9 when the uh, counter 1 is 1 and uh, finally when it is 2 this goes only up to 0 1 2 and 3 so after 3 it immediate, immediately resets to all zeros the cursor is here so when we go into this we will understand that counter 1 through counter 6 is um, all I mean uh, uh, 23, 59, 59 uh, when the, where the cursor was and immediately after that it will be 0 which is the case as this here and uh, let us go to the uh, last waveform in this. 
and uh, here in what you see is uh, once again the same 23.59.59 appearing here, the, the, uh, it has been exploded further. So, the last one is the cursor is right there on 23.59 and uh, you see that it, um, the last value was around uh, 8.64 uh, uh, nanosecond and um, after this you can see that all counters are made 0 here and you, uh, you can corresponding display you, s you would notice that that center G segment alone is 0, decimal point is of course 0 because we have not used decimal point and uh, all other segments are 1 that means it is displaying 0, this is in conformity with this 0, second 0 stands for the uh, display 2, uh, counter 3 for display 3 and so on. So, uh, let us take this 23.59.59 and then correlate this counter 1 must be uh, having 1 to 1 correspondence with the display 1. Let us say uh, here A, B, C, C is 0, just uh, keep track of this, then D, E, then F. C and F are uh, 0, this should uh, mean 2 because that is counter 1 value must be reflected. Let us, I will just draw it for you here. So, this is 2 here and uh, if you take this one, this is A segment, B here, then C is this one, C is 0, that is what we have here then uh, D here, E here, F here, F is also 0. So, you can just see here F then G. So, C and F are 0 here and uh, if, you, if it is at 3, so what you should have is A, B, C, D um, and uh, this is E and this is F. Uh, e and F must be 0, that is for A, B, C, D here, E and F, you can see this. This correspond display 2 or counter 2. Uh, must be a one to one correspondence that must be. This is seven segment display and uh, one lights up the LED, remember that. So, three is also verified. Now, let us go for five. So, here you see B is uh, absent, this is D, E. B and D are uh, off, that is 0. Let us make sure about this. So, that is display 3, that is 5 and display 3 here and uh, B is uh, off, then C, D, E. B and E and uh, is it correct B, C, D then B and D you can see. So, uh, that is why 5 is displayed and now for 9, so what, what you have here is uh, you do not have this, uh, this is C, D, E, E is uh, 0. So, let us make sure about uh, um, cross check at display 4. So, this is uh, A, B, C, D, E, this alone is 0. Uh, just do not be confused about this 0 because this is only for dis, uh, decimal point. Anyway, we are not using uh, turning on the decimal point that is why all of them are 0. So, this uh, confirms that there is a 1 to 1 correspondence between counter, uh, I mean counter 1 uh, and uh, display 1 and so on right up to con, uh, counter 1, uh, counter 6 and display 6. So, and you can see that 8.64 millisecond it has taken and um, we will uh, next we will have a uh, demo. See uh, what is shown here is the hardware, uh, you can see the uh, FPGA board that we have used earlier, this is the FPGA board, this is the uh, centrally located chip is the FPGA and, uh, and towards your left is the um, uh, digital I O card and uh, note that the cable is going from here and getting connected to the um, extender uh, I O port of the FPGA and uh, part of the cable is here on the left, there is a connector there and another connector here, both are extender uh, which will be connecting to the external world as far as the FPGA board is concerned. That means, the uh, I mean uh, IOs are connected there here and uh, this is the display that um, uh, we are going to use this uh, two digits for uh, hours, then minutes, then seconds here and uh, since it is not clear here. Yeah, the exploded view is shown down at the bottom, whatever you see there is actually uh, uh, functioning. Uh, uh, right now the real time clock is running here, uh, hours, minutes and uh, seconds here and notice that there is a power supply, there is also another power supply not visible to your view uh, just at the uh, rear end here and there is also a buzzer there, this is the piece of electric buzzer and in front of that mic to pick up when the uh, uh, buzzer gets activated and uh, we will see very many modes uh, and under uh, which condition the buzzer will be activated. And uh, to start with we what we need is uh, load, so on the system that you see here uh, there is one GX load, so just click on that one. So, it opens this window here, 
and uh, this window has different uh, bit streams available which is the result of Xilinx um, uh, place and route. So, this is for the RTC alarm dot bit and we are, uh, have also made uh, one hours fast as well as um, a minimum I mean I am sorry uh, minute fast. This is to uh, help us um, uh, quicken the um, uh, demo I mean, uh, mean to uh, uh, test the um, uh, real working by speeding up the clock so that we can see hours as well as minutes uh, very rapidly. For example, you want to let us say we want uh, first uh, let us download this hours fast uh, with this condition let us see what will happen. You just hold do not release the mouse button when it comes to this window and uh, just release that here. This is the bit stream we had uh, we are going to download and there is one load, uh, load button here just press this one and uh, uh, buzzer is also sounding the reason is it uh, at the time of um, configuring the counter is uh, all reset. Now, you notice that this hours is running fast you can see it started with zeros and uh, it is going counting 1 at a time and it will go right up to 23 and then uh, roll back to 0, 0. This will uh, check this hours which will normally take uh, 24 hours for you to check. We have taken hardly uh, half a minute and uh, so you have seen one revolution complete. So, now in order to ch uh, check the minutes wherein this similar uh, thing will be observed with this two I mean uh, two uh, minutes uh, display and for that what you need to do download is this uh, RTC alarm minute fast and uh, we will just one second drag and drop it here and then load this. It is downloading that particular minute fast bit here and uh, it starts with that buzzer was on once again and uh, I hope it is audible to you and uh, you can see now this I mean uh, two digits just below this two digits are going on one after another and it will go right up to 59 seconds and then roll back. And uh, so, in addition to this we have the usual uh, alarm uh, dot bit we will do the same thing and uh, uh, we will put it drag and put it over here. So, you can just observe the minutes uh, going right up to uh, 59 and then rolling back to 0 uh, uh, we will wait for uh, some more time for the next thing to uh, we will act on this alarm dot bit which is the normal um, uh, running in seconds minutes and hours which is the real real time clock and uh, we will take it up soon after uh, it uh, completes one revolution 59 now 0 uh, here and uh, one uh, hour it has advanced. So, like this you have checked uh, first hours two digit uh, uh, whole sequence you have seen as well as on the minutes. And now what is to be checked is only the seconds, but it is too fast for you to see maybe you can see the um, second digit of the seconds going and uh, in the normal mode we will see that um, now what we had uh, to do is uh, download this alarm dot bit which is the normal uh, uh, mode. So, we, we are downloading now by clicking on to the load. So, now it is uh, normal time. So, you can see uh, every one second it is making the change and the alarm is on and it is a beeping sound that as we have already seen in the design and this will uh, uh, is programmed for 30 seconds. So, and uh, now what we have to do is we will um, uh, 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 do the setting for a particular time. Uh, real time is not this correct because all of them are uh, 0. And now, uh, um, uh, busing uh, buzzer has stopped after 30 seconds. Now, uh, let us say uh, we want to set it to the desired uh, time, and um, so let us I will first invoke the uh, time here. We will first set the hours setting here, and uh, it is right here. Uh, uh, we have a DAP switch here, and uh, down we have uh, four uh, push button switches there. We need to uh, use this on the left push button switch in order to do the uh, setting. So, we will now do the setting as per the uh, system clock which you see right on the computer and uh, it is now 1241 uh, 1242 we will set it for 1243. 
now hours will be set. So, you keep it uh, hold it so that it uh, runs when it uh, closes by uh, uh, 12 is set now minutes. We keep it pressed so that it counts fast after 2 second delay only it started and now uh, when it closes on we will set there 43. Now, we have another 30 seconds look at the system clock there. So, now I will count the uh, 35, 36. So, after this 42, 38 now right now. So, I will count and um, our friend will um, synchronously uh, switch on that uh, start button. So, and uh, we will have a look 51 now, I am counting now 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, yes now right. So, it is 43 not 4 there and on the system also not 6, not 7, not 8, 9, 10 right. Some uh, slight discrepancy is there because uh, human being cannot set that clearly and uh, the control that we have is uh, on this here. So, this is the control that we will have to operate. So, hours, minutes, seconds is the display there and uh, these are all the setting. It was uh, put in set mode and uh, time mode. So, set time is what we have seen and using which we have uh, set and other modes we will see once again come back to uh, this. Now, you are seeing that uh, timer uh, running. Next, we will take it uh, take um, down counting. So, we will start now you set for the down counting and in order to do this one uh, what we need to do is um, we have to put it in set uh, stopwatch mode. We will now set the uh, stopwatch to 30 seconds and see what happens it is in down mode and uh, it, it has been already set by using once again this uh, hours, minutes, seconds uh, push button switch in seconds we have used and it was in set stopwatch mode. Now, we will start the down counting mode. So, by start uh, by pushing the start button um, you, uh, you can start uh, counting. You can now see after it was started 27, 26 and so on. Uh, when it touches 0 it will freeze on that point and uh, the buzzer also will be activated. So, let us wait for some more time. After this, we will be taking up the up counting uh, mode. We will uh, use the uh, real uh, time setting for the up count mode. Now, just wait for 5 seconds, 2, 1. So, you heard the buzzer and it froze there. The buzzer sounds for 30 seconds, we will cut it short anyway. We will set 15 seconds for the up count and now we will start in order to uh, uh, start the up count mode. So, now it is counting 1, 2, 3, 4 and uh, right on the top uh, on the uh, one bar um, uh, display is there here and uh, watch for one uh, small segment light up after the now uh, you can see that segment has come. In fact, uh, I forgot to tell you on the down counting mode then also it came on and uh, after 15 seconds is over uh, buzzer has been activated and it uh, count display has frozen to 15 seconds. And, uh, three alarms have been set for uh, uh, 1 o'clock afternoon of course and uh, then 1 1 1 minute I mean and then 1 2. So, 1 hour and uh, 2 minutes uh, 13 hours that means. So, uh, looking at the uh, actual real uh, clock that is on your screen right now is 46, 47 when it touches 0, 0, 0 uh, first alarm must come on and the buzzer also must come on. Just let us wait for this. So, the alarm has come on ex precisely at uh, 13 hours and it will go on right up to 30 seconds approximately and after this uh, you will be getting the second alarm that is alarm 2 has been set and uh, you can even see uh, it, um, uh, on the computer you can see the same time here. So, it ha this um, proves that it has been the timer which we have set right at the beginning has been running uh, in spite of the fact that we went into up count mode, down count mode and so on. And uh, so, uh, let us have a look in the meanwhile to the uh, settings just for recollection uh, how you had set. 
So, we had a run and set and uh, we are going to wait for this second alarm to come at uh, another 15 seconds. Till that time you see here, uh, we have used set uh, stopwatch earlier and uh, now in order to set uh, alarm, we need uh, set position here on. And uh, if you want to, uh, now you see exactly at one uh, minute, the second alarm uh, turned on, uh, alarm 2. So, that was this one because uh, using this you can set actually. So, this must be in set position and uh, you should take it, if you want to set alarm 1, you should take it here and then uh, it will be automatically set to whatever was there on the display and uh, which you can advance uh, only in the stopwatch, uh, uh, not necessary. Okay. So, whether it is in stopwatch, uh, I am sorry, or not, it will go on. So, exactly after 30 seconds, the second alarm also stops, uh, may not be exact, right, maybe it appears some half a second or one second delay is there. Uh, that is not a very important thing and uh, so let us wait for the third alarm to come, which will come in another uh, 12 seconds. At uh, 13 hours, 2 minutes, 0, 0 seconds, you will, uh, you have to get the third alarm. Once again it uh, went on and for next uh, about 30 seconds it will sound. As I mentioned, uh, this application can be used for uh, patients like uh, epilepsy and if you do not administer the uh, tablets, if they do not, if they fail to take the tablets in time, say within half an hour or 45 minutes, they will promptly get uh, fits. So, in order to avoid this one, you can have this particular timer uh, which will keep them warning for um, uh, say at uh, morning at uh, 8 o'clock then uh, towards lunch time at uh, 1 o'clock and then again at 7 o'clock dinner time. So, uh, they should not miss it uh, for long and uh, in fact, you can uh, build in even more sophistication. Suppose they, uh, in spite of your ringing in time, suppose they take much more time and uh, suppose they have dozed off. So, what do you do? You have, to, you can continue to uh, sound the alarm uh, intermittently after 5 minutes and so on uh, till they uh, press another button to um, uh, acknowledge. So, you can, if you want, you can add this feature uh, in your uh, assignment, which you are going to see next. Let us uh, discuss our uh, assignments, rather your assignments. And uh, first assignment is, we have used 24 hours clock and uh, what you uh, have to do now is, uh, provide another switch and um, include 12 hours clock as well. For I uh, will read it out, modify the verilog code to display the timing range uh, 0 to 11.59.59, this is the maximum. After this, it has to roll back to uh, zeros. Besides the 24 hours range and other features, uh, you have to retain as it is. And uh, you may use another input and an output available in the expansion connector of the FPGA board for this purpose. I think this is clear to you. And uh, second assignment is, so uh, when you say talk of uh, real time clock, so you have to have year, month, day as well. Otherwise, it is not really a real time clock and uh, it should, uh, when you say year, it should at least uh, be for the present millennium, is that right? And uh, so, right, uh, right from 2000 to 2099, you can have. So, you make sure that you have and for which you need only two digits. You do not worry about uh, two, 2000, um, uh, last two digits alone you need to take. So, and uh, month of course is clear, up to 12 it can go 1 through 12 and uh, day again depending upon whether it is uh, February or January and so on. So, you have to uh, keep track of all the variations in the uh, number of days in the month. So, you have to keep track of all this and then build the whole thing uh, and uh, basically it is going to be a, um, a different counters here. And, uh, you do not have to worry about uh, sounding the alarm uh, with reference to any of this. So, let the alarms be as it is uh, catering only to the hours, minutes and seconds. So, uh, without disturbing hours, minutes, seconds, you should build this year, month and day as well, two digits each and uh, for which you use the same display, uh, display 1 through display 6 and uh, you need to use a different counter, uh, remember that and uh, that is what we say using the existing LEDs. So, third assignment for you is, uh, I will read it out first. If you are to use the timer for applications demanding timing in milliseconds in addition to seconds and uh, um, more often we need for milliseconds, for example, you have a photographic uh, uh, exposure 
I mean you want to de um, develop print before that you have to expose the film and uh, inside the do uh, in, uh, dark room. So, you may need probably a millisecond resolution onwards. So, for which you need a uh, timing uh, right from 0 to triple 9 dot triple 9. So, after uh, dot you have 3 digits. So, this works out to be 1 millisecond the very uh, fag end of the on the right. So, I will uh, read it out if you are to use the timer for applications demanding timing in milliseconds in addition to seconds then we need to modify the existing design that is obvious. Use appropriate numbers of additional inputs or outputs and provide user presetting to include this feature in your design change. And uh, you also need to have presetting appropriate uh, presetting. So, all this uh, demand um, uh, additional inputs. So, you can um, um, uh, use push button switches preferably and um, the display shall be in the range 0 to triple 9 dot triple 9 seconds. The timing must commence when the user presses the start push button. So, this timer is a class different from what we are uh, used to earlier and in that case it was an on delay timer after the set delay uh, it, um, the output timer out uh, goes high uh, that is called on delay timer whereas in this what we want is an interval delay timer. So, when you push a button the time delay starts as well as timer out goes high and after the delay is over. Uh, the timer out uh, again goes low and that is what you want is something like pushing the button starting the time and after the set uh, delay is over for example, if you have set uh, triple 9 dot triple 9 seconds and uh, after that um, uh, time is elapsed a uh, timer out goes uh, low and uh, till that time uh, soon after you uh, push the start button it went high and that is what is called interval delay timer this is what you are required to design now. And, uh, on similar lines we have done before for on delay timer you have to do only thing logic will have to you have to incorporate or change it uh, aptly. And after the lapse of the set delay the output is turned off and the beeping audio alarm sounds for 30 seconds. So, this is uh, once again the same thing and uh, use a separate switch preferably a push button switch for presetting or clearing the timer before restarting by pressing start push button. If you start push uh, if you press the start push button it should uh, start and uh, for you need to either preset or clear depending upon what mode you want to use. If you use the down counting mode so you would like to preset for this you need another um, uh, input uh, say you have uh, for presetting you can have another switch maybe a, uh, it's a likely a choice would be a push button switch. So, you push this one. So, whatever was uh, set on the display uh, let us say triple 9.999 and um, uh, that will be uh, um, uh, transferred to the running counter and uh, at that point of time, but it would not start unless you push the button uh, I mean uh, start push button. And after this uh, otherwise if you want uh, use up counter you would uh, like to clear to start with. So, you can uh, the preset value is uh, inside the uh, preset counters and uh, just like we had uh, alarm uh, counter separate for presetting them and here also you can have for up counting or down counting a preset counter separately and uh, the running counter is different. So, whenever you push the button if it is up counter let us clear if it is down counter let us preset. So, once you have preset it will be cleared all the display will be cleared when you push the start push button now it will start running right from 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and till the set value is got on the display. And by that time the timer out will go low and when you had started it it went high and so it remains high for the duration of the delay that you have set. And after that timer out goes low the digital timer may be stopped or resumed at any point of time as was done in the design presented before. This uh, the same feature that we have seen earlier and let us have uh, one more um, this is the last assignment for you and I will quickly read this first. Lots of power is being wasted in offices, factories, institutions especially during lunch time etcetera which can be easily avoided by installing a real time clock such as that we have designed of course, needing quite many changes we need to do quite a lot of changes in this. Include in your design change 4 outputs for switching on or off 4 different electrical circuits that 
power lights fans air conditioners etc as per the following schedule as an example for example you want to um, uh, uh, set from uh, monday through friday let us say uh, you want to um, uh, if it is a factory or an office it starts uh, starting time will be 8 o'clock so and um, uh, then you had to switch on uh, uh, one of the circuits i have mentioned four different circuits for lights fans air conditioners and one more uh, some other um, load so independently you will have to be in a position to set all this and uh, and once again it is not merely monday through friday it has to be right from monday through sunday all you will have to cater to and uh, it's uh, as an example what has been shown is only um, two two pairs of uh, timing here so it will be on at this 8 o'clock then off uh, at the uh, lunch time and after the lunch time is over at 13 hours you have to switch on once again and switch it off towards the uh, uh, end of the current shift and uh, so uh, this is not adequate i want you to add two more for example you need a tea time at uh, let us say at uh, 10 o'clock and uh, let us have a break for 15 minutes or 20 minutes so it should be programmable because you say on time is this off time is this so accordingly you can do that and uh, you uh, you are required to do in addition to this two more uh, settings uh, tea time for morning at 10 o'clock and uh, 14 hours or something whatever you choose uh, towards uh, evening and you must facilitate the user to program for any day of the week any time and up to four different time settings each for switching on and switching off lights etc this is what we have said each of the power loads must be individually programmed and uh, this has to be individual and um, each must be four different times provide an additional switch for overriding the automatic control to switch on all the four circuits when the occasion demands you should also have a provision which will uh, turn on for example uh, it was a holiday and uh, timer would have not uh, switched on so what do you do there must be a overriding uh, control switch there in order to switch this so you can veto uh, the automatic control that you have are you clear with this assignment if so thank you